Okay, hi everyone, my name is Valeria, I'm 16, and today I'm gonna talk about helping people. So, personally, I can say that helping people can boost your self-esteem and your overall mood. But before I get into that, let's talk about what helping truly means. By definition, helping is the action that makes it easier for someone to do something by offering one's services or resources. But I don't completely agree with this statement. I have two problems with it. First one is that you can always you cannot always make it easy for someone to go through something. For example, if your friend told you that their parent died, you probably wouldn't be able to make it easy for them to grieve. You can be there for them and listen to them, but you probably won't make it easy, that whole process. My second issue with this statement is that it is not always by giving out resources or services that you can help someone. Sometimes the only thing that people need is to be heard or hear something positive and that's quite easy but on the other hand sometimes helping can be really hard you need to have the sheer will to help and give off your time to that person that's called altruism and compassion but what if I told you that helping can actually help the helper as well yes you heard me correctly I'm gonna be pretty straightforward and there's scientific proof to back that up so if you help someone, you're probably going to experience something called the helper sigh. The helper sigh is ba basically when your brain is rewarded with happy hormones when you help someone. Those hormones are dopamine and serotonin. They're pretty famous. I think a lot of you guys know what they are. And they're basically what makes you choose TikTok over cleaning the dishes, for example. We also have endorphin, and it's really interesting because it's the pleasant feeling you get after doing something unpleasant, for example, biting into spicy food. It hurts, it burns, but we still do it, do it anyways. And we have oxytocin. Oxytocin, also known as the love hormone, it can basically block cortisol, and cortisol is heavily associated with stress. So yes, it can basically block off stress. So all those four, t four together are a way to a happy life, and keep in mind, all those four together are found in your brain when you help someone. So why does helping generate a biological response in our brain. Basically, there is a study in Mayo Clinic, one of the best clinics in USA, that tells us that Darwin studied that a long time ago and he discovered that kindness can actually be partially genetically predetermined. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It sounds crazy, but it makes sense. So in an evolution perspective, you can tell that a long time ago, people needed to team up in order to survive. So people who helped others had more chances of gathering up and had more chances of surviving other predators. While people who didn't help probably tended to be more alone and isolated, therefore more chances of dying. If you still don't believe me, we have an up-to-date proof of that, and that is the loving and caring nature of maternal love. Y again, moms, who back then helped others had more had children with more chances of growing up and reproducing. All moms who just let their kids be and didn't help them as much had children with less chances of growing up. So therefore, the <laughs> the genes of being kind were passed on, while the genes of being not so kind died off. Okay, even after everything I told you, you'd expect the society to be a very wholesome place with people helping each other all the time. But that's not the case. I mean, you know, I know, everybody knows that that's not the case. So why is that? Basically, society nowadays tells us that has started a trend where being selfish is equal of being successful. And if people tell you that, tr treating people tr like trash or treating people like garbage if they don't add up or are not useful enough, they are completely wrong. What happened was probably in the past, they suffered and people didn't love them as much. So the way they found to cope was to love themselves and ignore the rest of the people. So that way, when people tell you that just caring less about other people is the right way, it is definitely not. It is definitely not the right way and we need to help people who tell you that. So, also the internet has told us that 
you can just be straight up mean or just be brutally honest on the internet. Why is that? When you go on your phone, it's for you page, your feed, your account, your profile. Everything is you and your opi opinion matters the most. But is that right? Is that completely correct? So for the media, it makes sense. But comments like this one, your art sucks. I never cringed so hard in my life. If I had her body, I could never post that. Those comments are mean, and we tend to forget, because our opinion is the only thing that matters, that there is another person there reading those comments on the other side of the screen. And because we lack this physical content, we either ignore it, this fact, or we just forget it simply. But we need to stop that, because that makes the world a toxic place to live in. So I have a, a quote for you. If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help someone. So this was said by someone in ancient China. So a thousand of years ago, somebody said that on the other side of the world. So helping people is good and it has been known in mankind since ever. Another quote for you is, the sole meaning of life is to serve humanity. And we should live by that. If we did that, the world would, be, would become a better place. And it sounds cliche, but if I helped someone, that person would be mo more motivated to help another person. And that person would be more motivated to help other people. Therefore, the cycle continues and the world would become just a little better. My mom is a school counselor here. And she tells me really often that sometimes when a person is sad, a student is sad, the only thing they need is to be heard or a hug or a smile. So my message to you are, is, parents, listen to your kids and talk to them. Kids, listen to your parents and understand them. They went through the same thing as you, the pandemic. And children, siblings, friends, help each other. We need to unite in order to thrive in this world. So I have a question for you all. Have you helped anyone today? Have you shown kindness? If not, please, I encourage you to do so. That was my TED Talk. Thank you for watching.